Hello, everybody. My name's Roy Elsey. I'm Chief Analyst at Omdia in the Cloud and Data Center Practice. And what I want to talk to you today about is 2023 trends to watch in cloud computing. I've identified five key trends, uh, and I just want to briefly touch on these five trends um, and give you a taster for what my report and what my research will be covering in 2023. Firstly, you're going to see the concept of the abstracted cloud, or the Uber cloud, as I've called it, become more of a reality. Now, this is a term that I've heard a few people talk about in 2022, but in 2023, I think you're going to hear more people talking about it, and you're going to start to see some tangible, albeit very basic, implementations of it. But what we're talking about with the Uber cloud, or I'm talking about with the Uber cloud, should I be clear, is it is services built on top of the hyperscaler or other cloud providers services and being connected together to make a true multi cross cloud solution. So for example, you could probably want to use the Spanner database in Google and use the Lambda functions in AWS and your data residing in some repository in Microsoft, you build that application using those three different capabilities that you've matched, connect them together and run them on top of the cloud services. So just like VMware with its virtualization layer took the hardware out of the equation and allowed you to put just about any hardware, as long as it was running the virtualization software from VMware, so you abstracted that above the hardware, we're now going to see the same with the cloud. Early days, but that's definitely coming. The next one is strategic hybrid and multi-cloud is going to become much more widely deployed. Now, we are in a world where we are in multi-cloud, yes, but it's accidental multi-cloud. That is, people have got to this position by virtue of the fact that people have adopted different bits of cloud or they've acquired companies or any other means necessary, but it hasn't been strategically thought through. And if you think back to the first point, the abstracted cloud, the Uber cloud, then we're not at that point where true multi-cloud is, is working across clouds. It's still you decide a cloud for a workload type and use it for that type and don't look to move it between cloud providers. And that's what we're talking about here. In 2023, you're going to see this become much more strategic. The choice of cloud provider to run the workloads will be much more scrutinized into its cost, its risk, its particular characteristics to match that that the company wants. The third area that I expect to see more of is in 2023 is the data cloud, the data fabric, the data plane, call it what you want. But the fact that data, which underpins all of the activities we're talking about and tends to be locked in a location, can be at least identified, found, and used. Going back to the first point, True data portability from cloud requires the economics of the cloud providers to be changed from data egress charges being applied to being no data ingress or egress charges. So data can freely flow between clouds as workloads flow between clouds. We are a few years away from that, but the concept of this data cloud is putting the fundamental building blocks in place to deliver it. The fourth is you are definitely going to see more sovereign and industry clouds. Sovereign clouds are being used for two main reasons. The EU started this with its uh, distrust of the US Cloud Act um, and wanting EU data to be in US owned companies sovereign, i.e. out of the way, nobody in the CIA or whatever three-letter acronym in the US Secret Service could gain access to it. 
and that required air gapped and protected uh, capability, the sovereign cloud. But countries have jumped onto this bandwagon of the sovereign cloud, and you are now seeing other regions and other countries look at it and go, that's a way of getting investment in my country. If I declare data sovereignty privacy laws, then if they want to use the cloud, the cloud has got to be in my country, taxed, buying jobs, developing in the country. So there is two different sovereign clouds, but basically they will be addressed in a very similar way. Industry clouds, slightly different. What you're seeing with industry clouds is speaking the language and building the ecosystem up around a particular industry vertical. It doesn't mean to say that you're going to have the physical infrastructure separate from everything else. It's more likely that it's going to be a logical separation, but it's going to be something that a healthcare professional can understand that if there is a collaboration between three different healthcare types of organization, you know, primary sort of healthcare and secondary healthcare or, or whatever, then with the healthcare cloud, they could have the same ecosystem of application providers running in the cloud so that they could at least talk to each other and operate um, as a single entity. Uh, and the final one, the fifth entity that uh, I want to touch on is cloud operations, uh, cloud ops or FinOps, which is closely associated with cloud ops. But the fact that as we get to the point where the cloud is now the dominant environment approach in organizations, we need to change our IT operations structures and our roles and responsibilities, so our RACI models, to match what we are now dealing with. Because what we are dealing with now is a shared responsibility model in the cloud. Um, understanding that, understanding what is the responsibility of um, the IT department, what is the cloud provider's responsibility are key, and making sure that the processes, procedures, roles and responsibilities all map onto that. There's a lot more in my uh, Trends to Watch 2023 PowerPoint presentation, but those are the highlights and uh, look forward to catching you up later. Thank you very much and goodbye.